and I just now started using a, a fresh new piece of Hagaruma chai. Oh, the smell and the taste of Hagaruma chai. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. going to do engineering clocks soon available tomorrow on Wednesday Teespring freaked it up big time and this is why we have to delay the release a tiny little bit I, I want to release it I'm, I'm so excited about this thing I, I love it and I know you guys want it too so yeah soon out I'm going to keep you updated on my story or something we are going to do mathematics done wrong gun right all right we are going to execute the logarithm rules wrong today. Logarithm of x over y, where logarithm is the natural log, okay, keep this in mind, is equal to logarithm of x over log of y. Mm, kind of weird, am I right? But there are actually solutions to it. And the solution curves look absolutely fantastic. Watch this video till the end. Watch as much of the video as possible. Watch time really helps the channel out big time. So, so please do so. The solution curve is, is really crazy and it just looks fantastic. So you should really watch for a while. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. We are just going to dive right in, some calculations, and then we are going to talk about the solution curve. It's going to be good, trust me. So, um, logarithm of x over y. This is the first thing we can actually read, right? This is nothing but the logarithm of x minus the log of y. So, this is the log of x minus the log of y. And at first, I would like to give a little restriction here because Overall, we want to solve a quadratic pretty soon in our logarithm of y. But to do this, we would need to multiply both sides by the logarithm of y. We can multiply by something on both sides if it's equal to zero. When is the logarithm of something equal to zero? When the argument is equal to one. So we don't want to take a look at y being equal to one. Y not equal to one. This is something that we have to restrict on our original problem here for us to solve it in some way. Now with that out of the way, we need to talk about this a bit more on the solution curve. We are going to multiply both sides by the log of y and we are going to get exactly on the left hand side log of x being equal to log of x times the log of y minus the logarithm squared of y. And now you see if we just rename our log of y to be equal to a, I don't care, then this thing is going to be a quadratic in our log of y. This is a negative a squared plus log of x times a being equal to the log of x. Let us bring everything to one side and a zero on the other side and then we are going to simply solve a quadratic equation, which is pretty easy to be honest. So this is going to give us log squared of y minus log of x times log of y plus logarithm of x being equal to zero. And now you see, yeah, give log of y a new name and then you are just going to have a simple quadratic equation here that, that we can easily solve using the quadratic formula. If we do this, then we are going to get two branches of the logarithm on our log of y, meaning two solutions, log one or two of y are going to be, all right, on the left hand side, so on the left side of the plus minus thing of two solutions, we are going to get um, log of x over 2. Just as a little side note, log of x over 2 is nothing but 1 half times log of x by the logarithm properties. This is the log of x to the 1 half power. This is the log of square root of x. Just keep this in mind for simplification purposes. Plus or minus the square root of, and then we are going to get um, log squared of x, this should be minus 4 log of x, where our 1 quarter was a common factor that we can bring together with the square root to the outside, meaning we are going to get a factor of 1 half in the front. Simple quadratic formula. Now you can either take a look at the two branches of the logarithm here as the solution curve for y, or we can find an explicit um, expression for our y here by taking base e on both sides. Let us do this real quick. This is what we are going to take a look at soon. So we are going to take base e on both sides. e to the logarithm of something is just a something in itself. It's going to cancel out inverse functions, all right? Then we are going to take e to this whole thing. e to the a 
plus b is nothing but e to the a plus uh, times e to the b. I'm terribly sorry. Meaning we are going to have e to the logarithm or square root of x is going to be just square root of x. Okay, I'm going to write it out here. Hello kitty catties, nice to have you here. So y is equal to the square root of x times e to the something. It's as easy as it is. e to the plus minus one half square root something. Also we have log of x as a common factor. I'm going to use the um, multiplicative property of the square root to factor it out a little bit. Okay, so this is just an equivalent expression here. Take a piece of paper, try it out for yourself, then everything is going to be way easier. One half square root of log of x minus four times the square root of log of x. Okay, I hope you could follow everything I did here, just some basic operations. And now, with that out of the way, we are going to take a look at the solution curve at first a tiny little bit and, and then there's going to be a little surprise, okay? Just a um, little Desmos graph here because solution curve is, is pretty wild. I like this thing, it's something really unique in my opinion. It looks kind of hyperbola. it's pretty cool. So we are going to draw a little graph here, nothing too special. Um, y is with respect to x in our case. And now, at first, I want you guys to notice something. This is just a point of reference, but it's something that wasn't allowed at first. On our original problem, y being equal to 1 wasn't possible. But we are still going to plug it in here as a point of reference. If we let x to be equal to 1, then square root of 1 is just going to be 1. And then e to the log of 1 is going to be 0, this whole thing is going to be 0, e to the 0 of power is 1, 1 times 1 is going to give us 1. So we actually have, um, so if this is 1 and this is also 1, we have 1, 1 as kind of a point here that we can't really reach just because. Okay, it, it doesn't work out on the original problem because we would divide by 0 in some way. Now, as a little point of reference, what else can we um, see? What happens if we let x go to zero, for example? At first on the positive branch up here. Then this is going to be zero in some way and then logarithm of x as this approaches zero it's going to be negative infinity. Hmm, square root of negative infinity is a bit shitty shitty, all right? But if we bring this into here yet again, what can we see here? Logarithm squared of zero is going to be positive infinity. Polynomial of the second degree grows way harder than the first degree polynomial. So overall this part which goes to infinity outgrows what we have here. So overall we are going to have infinity up here in the exponent. e to the infinity times zero. Exponential function grows way faster and harder than our square root function here. So the infinity overtakes the zero, meaning everything goes to infinity overall. Meaning somewhere up here, we are going to have something like this, okay? It's just going to grow a tiny little bit and it's going to go to infinity in some way. This is just some heuristic stuff that we are doing here, okay? Um, you can just apply limits here and it's going to make way more sense. Now what happens if we take a look at the negative branch here? where our x approaches zero yet again. Then by the same arguments here, this goes to infinity overall, but e to the negative infinity is going to give us zero. Zero times zero is zero. This was way easier. Meaning zero, zero is a point that kind of works out, but only in the limit. It only works out in the limit, okay? And those are the two branches. Positive branch, okay? And this is the negative branch down here. We can't really reach zero, okay, you have to restrict it, and we can't really reach um, one, meaning we have to restrict our um, x and y values to a certain range in some way between zero and one here, at least for our x that we are going to have here, strictly between zero and one. And there's also something completely different. Log of x over y. There's one really trivial solution and, and with logarithms it's always so crazy with the number 2 and its powers. If we take a look at x being equal to 4 and y being equal to 2 for example. Logarithm of 4 over um, e to the, um, I'm terribly sorry, we're going to take a look at e to the 4th power. So x 
being equal to e to the fourth power and y being equal to e squared. Um, I was just thinking about this, solu uh, this solution here and then it would work out, two and four, but um, we have to trace it back to what we have here. Okay, so e to the fourth power and e squared. This is going to give us e squared overall in here. Log of e squared is going to give us two. This is log of e to the fourth power, so four over log of e squared is going to give us two, four over two. So this is indeed a solution. We have x being equal to e to the fourth power as a solution with the, the y value of e squared. e to the fourth power is pretty big. Something 57 best prime number. It's somewhere here. I can't even draw it. This is why we are going to take a look at the graph now. So, here we go, Desmos graphing. Uh, I, I know you guys like visualizations. This is why I wanted to include it a bit more in my graphy type videos. And here's the original solution curve that we have found out for the first positive and negative branches. So here's the positive branch up there and here's the negative branch. And 1, 1 is being assigned as a valid point here just because we um, we are modifying the problem basically by multiplying both sides by log of y, meaning we are going to get rid of um, a singularity that we had in the first place. But on the original problem, it's not possible as well as zero, zero. This is also not something that is possible, it's undefined. Now, here's the point that I was talking about, e to the fourth power and e squared. And let me zoom out a tiny little bit, okay? Oh, a bit more? Oh, wh what? 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 Where? Where? Oh boy! <laughs> there we go! There is nothing for ages. But then suddenly we end up with this. With whatever the heck this is. And you see what, what I find really exciting about this solution curve is that the more you zoom out, the more this thing looks like a triangle. And this is so hyperbole, it's, it's so weird. It, it looks like a hyperbola in some way with the two branches that, that you are going to have. And, and here it just looks like a triangle that, that is going to be traced out. And this is just pretty amazing in my opinion. This, this graph is really weird. And from, from here on outwards, everything is, is possible. Each and every value is possible. It's going to give you some kind of other um, real number that you can pair it with. So this is kind of interesting in my opinion. Uh, yeah, just some little Desmos insights. And if we trace this problem back to the logarithm one that we had at first, so where y was equal to the logarithm of y basically, then we are going to get exactly this here. Our branches look a bit differently, obviously. This is what we have here. Basically our singularity that we had is going to be directed to the negative branch this time. And over here it's also going to trace out some kind of weird triangle, really stretched one, but not as hard as the blue one. So this is kind of interesting in my opinion. And here's the other point um, that is kind of here on this line. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy this and I'm going to um, give the commando back to, to Papa Flemmy. I hope you did like this little sex star um, thing that we did here, major prep thing. It's not major prep anymore, it's sex star. Sub subscribe to my boy, he's a pretty good guy. But I hope you did enjoy this little insight. It's pretty interesting, right? It, it kind of looks like a hyperbola in some way. It's just pretty amazing. So for hyperbolas, we have something like this here in some way. And yeah, um, I can draw. And this is kind of crazy. And, and we have kind of the same situation here in that it's just so weird. It's just so weird. It goes to zero in some way. It just looks pretty crazy and I really like this and, and this is why I enjoyed this, this problem so much. And I hope you did enjoy this problem too. If you did, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel, if like. Take a look at Papa Flemmy too. A lot of new maths content coming out there. Engineering clocks soon available. I promise my boys and girls. I'm until next video. I'm wishing you guys a flammable day. Ciao.